Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time, and this week's topic is, is the market random? Is this just some random walk down the street for the markets? Or do we actually have an edge in the market? And if we do have an edge, what is our edge, and how do we gain that edge? Do technicals really work? Should we focus on fundamentals? I don't know. So that's what we're going to talk about today, guys. Is the market just random? Maybe. I think a lot of people think that they can explain every little thing that happens in the market, but I don't think that that's true. Why? Because they don't want to admit that they don't know sometimes. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. It's a very, very important topic um, because, again, a lot of you try to make sense out of things that are nonsensical, that can't be made sense of. Okay, So it's, it's a powerful lecture. Uh, we will take a look at what patterns maybe give us an edge and what things don't give us an edge and where you need to be in that to make money in the markets. All right. So if you like these videos, please click that like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. I am Jared Wesley. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is, what's your edge? So we've talked about this topic in the past, and uh, more recently, we talked a little bit about blackjack and things of that nature. Today's lecture is not gonna focus on that in any way, shape, or form, all right? We're not actually gonna talk about specific statistics or odds or numbers like that. Um, we're gonna spend some time asking and answering the question is, is the market random? Is it? Is it just random? Okay. So we're going to spend some time on that and we're going to take a look at some charts. Uh, we're going to take a look at some text based slides and we're going to get some participation from you guys um, because I want your input on certain things. All right. And a little curveball this week. There is no when will the insanity stop segment. I do have a file folder full of new material. I thought we should just take a break this week. All right. Uh, keep it on the positive side of things this week um, because, you know, while they are helpful, they are very eye opening as well to folks. And uh, we'll just keep it a little more positive. So no insanity this week. But I will tell you, it hasn't stopped because I still have a whole bunch of them that we haven't talked about yet. So let's just dig right in this week. OK. First and foremost, we're going to ask the question, what is the stock market? What is the stock market, right? Well, it's made up of thousands of stocks traded by millions of people in the United States of America, as well as around the world. This is the United States stock market, right? The NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, who is in the market? Well, hedge funds trade the market, pension funds trade the market, HFT firms trade the market. People who know absolutely positively nothing about the market still trade the market. Day traders, swing traders, core traders trade the market, banks trade the market. My goodness, just about everybody trades the market. Interesting side note, roughly only about 55 to 57 percent of Americans actually have a stock portfolio. And that means just one share. Isn't that fascinating? Uh, that means just over half do, but almost half don't. 45% give or take don't. Um, it's something you should consider long term having yourself a stock portfolio uh, because real estate and stocks are two of the best, probably most common popular ways to earn money while you're sleeping and to be able to retire comfortably uh, because Social Security ain't going to do it. But that's a whole nother topic. The point is, though, basically, Everybody's in the market to some extent, right? It kind of runs the world because you don't think much about it, but oh, Apple, huge company, they sell iPhones and iPads and computers and, and AirPods and blah, 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 but they're on the listed on the stock exchange. And if people start buying Apple and start selling the stock and it tanks 90%, they could go bankrupt. Now, I understand that that's a far stretch. It's not the point, though. The stock market in a lot of ways runs the United States and in some ways runs the world because there's so much invested in it. Um, you know, it's, it's a trickle down effect, I suppose. The point, though, is that there are professionals in the market. There are novices in the market. There's everybody in the market. All right. And your job um, as a trader anyway is to try to make some money from the market. But there are a lot of people who have, don't know anything about it, right? So then we bring ourselves to, well, who controls the market? Who controls the market? Who makes the market go up and down? Who does that? Is that like a, a button somebody presses at a hedge fund? 
Uh, is that something that Warren Buffett does? Is that something that Ray Dalio does? Is that something that the Fed chairman does? Is that something that, you know, little, I don't know, Johnny and Susie do? Uh, who, who does this? Right? Who controls the market? Do you guys know who controls the market? Anybody specifically? I mean, the answer is on the screen, right? The answer is, is, is everyone and no one, right? It's no one person. That's why it's in italics. No one person controls the market. The Illuminati, right? Everyone, right? Lots of people trade the markets, yet no one controls it. No, the one is italicized again. No one controls it. We control it. All of us put together. Now, granted, there is big money and there is small money. We are small money compared to the money that hedge funds have, pension funds, banks, HFT firms, etc. We're, we're small potatoes, small fish. But you need to understand that no one controls the market. The market just is, and it runs off of fear and greed. All right, and it's this cycle of fear and greed that we are trying to take advantage of. Okay. So now I'm going to need your help on these next three or four slides. Okay. I'm going to need your help. All right. Okay. Slides pretty clear, right? What's the next direction of this stock? All right. I just pulled this up yesterday. Don't worry about what the company is. It doesn't matter. I should have probably just taken it off. What's the next direction of this stock? Just give me any answer you want. What's the next direction of this stock? Lower, 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 pull back, down, okay. All right, you guys are on the same page, okay. Looks neutral, okay. Down, all right. Hold on, we're not done, there's, there's a few more, okay. Possible up to resistance, but mainly down, higher, we do not know. Okay, HPL or test the 300 area, okay, higher pivot low, pull back, pull back to 240, pull back, okay, all right, cool, let's uh, put that in there, okay, now let's go to the next one, all right, okay, what's the next direction of this stock, what's the next direction of this stock? Well, the weekly is a pretty good time frame, Molly. You know, lower, lower, pull back, lower, 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 neutral. Lower high, higher low, higher high, expectation is lower, lower, th three bar play, oof, slow down there. Sideways, lower, but never really know, lower, hmm. okay, all right, let's do it again. What's the next direction? What's the next direction of this stock? Lower maybe. Holy crap. Sideways, higher, neutral, hard to say. Anyone's guess, higher, sideways, stay in a range, no idea. Lower, dead sideways, buyout. That's a pretty wide range buyout unless it happened today. <laughs> Twenty dollar range, um, sideways, sideways. I wouldn't touch that. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold on. All right. Let's do it one last time. Let's do it one last time. Okay. All right. What's the direction of this stock? Higher, bounce, higher, higher, down, higher. Possible bounce off the 200. Looking to go up maybe higher, lower. Hmm. Fascinating, isn't it? Looks like a quarterly cycle based on earnings. Down with expected pullback. Change of color bar. Depends on the time frame. Bounce off support. Based on trend lines, higher, probably higher. Okay. Well, now, 
Did we learn anything from those four charts? I didn't give my opinion in any way. I just simply asked you guys, what is the next direction of these four stocks? What did we learn? Everyone is all over the map. Everyone has an opinion. Well, yes, that's true. Most people do have an opinion, okay? We all do it to some level, okay? We, we, learned, we learned one thing for sure, that many people have differing opinions, right? We learned that. There are definitely a lot of different opinions to be had on these last four charts, okay? Maybe some of them have stronger opinions in one direction or another, but there's always, in every chart I showed, there was an opposing opinion at least one time, and in some cases, many, many times, right? So, now, this brings me to the point. The crux of what we're going to talk about today, okay? And it's this right here. And you're gonna be surprised when we talk about this, because everything we do never talks about this. We almost never talk about this. In fact, I don't even remember if we have ever talked about it, okay? On a, on a level, perhaps, but in detail. Is the stock market random? Is it random? What do you guys think? Johnny says no. Rouge, no. Levi, no. Fernando, nope. Elaborate. Well, there's a good word. Randomly manipulated. Okay, 50% of the time. No, it's mostly efficient. Well, efficient can be randomly. Could be random, right? Yes, market is random. The stock market just is, based on majority's opinion, rigged and scripted, run by the Whopper computer, okay? No, because it follows patterns. Fascinating. Fascinating. So what is the real answer to this question? Everyone has an opinion, which they should, I suppose, right? Now, let me ask you guys a question. Second question, before I move to the next slide. Do you feel like, okay, and this is an important question, do you feel like your opinion that you just gave is in some way affected or manipulated by your training? Do you feel like the opinion, whatever your opinion was, I, you know, because I got a lot of different opinions, do you feel like the opinion you just gave is in some way affected or manipulated by your training you have. The answer most definitely has to be yes because that's just life in general, right? The way we see the world through our personal lens and our lens is created by past experiences, right? So, I mean, it's hard to say no to that question because it's true for everything we look at in the world, right? How we view things is largely due to how we were raised or things we've experienced in life, et cetera, and so forth, okay? So, now let's move on to, yes, the market is random most of the time. What proves this to be right? The market is random most of the time. I'll give you a hint. Think about your pre-market routine. I'll give you a hint. Think about your pre-market routine. Think about it. What do you do every morning? You come in, you look at a watch list, a gap list, a daily list, and you look at how many stocks? 100, 500, 1,000, right? I mean, hundreds, hundreds. How many do you pick? How many make it to your list? You, I mean, I know I literally go through at least two to 400 stocks every morning, every morning. How many make it on a list? Five? 10? 
Well, gosh, if the market's not random, why don't you have 400 stocks on your list? Why? I mean, come on, if you can make sense of everything, why don't you have 400 ideas on your list? You all said the market's not random, not you all, but many of you said it's not random. Well, if that's the case, why can't we make sense of every stock that we see? Ooh, ooh, that comment, ooh, brings me to an important point that we're gonna talk about. Ah, Claude, there we go. Claude is getting there, looking for exceptional confluence. So, yes, the market is random most of the time. It is, most of the time it's random. We don't always know what the market or stock should be doing. We aren't supposed to know everything all of the time. <gasps> oh no, Jared, you just didn't say that. We aren't supposed to know everything all of the time, but my wife demands that of me. Your job is not to know everything all the time. It's not your job, okay? That's not our goal as a trader. Our goal isn't to know everything all of the time about everything. Most price action is random. Ignore random price action. Most of the things you look at are just random. Can you honestly tell me with certainty that the market is gonna go higher or lower in the next 10 minutes? Or next five days? No, because you don't know what news might come out. Elon Musk might say something. The election might change this. The Fed chairman might do that. The Fed chairman might pass away. You have no idea, none. It's random, it's completely random. There could be a hurricane in Florida and it puts an insurance company out of business. That's pretty random. And that's the point, Brian. The comment that we're, I'm reading here is, most of the charts earlier, I was guessing the direction. I had no idea. Thank you for saying that. And no, I didn't pay you to say that because that's gonna take me to the next slide, which is extremely important. How traders get in trouble, and Brian, you were just right on cue for that, my man, right on cue. How traders get in trouble. They try to explain something that can't be explained. They try to make something out of nothing, feeling compelled to know or explain everything all of the time. Or just flat gambling. Tell me you've never done this before. Tell me. Tell me a friend or someone has never asked you about a stock and then you go home and you take a look at the chart and you get back to them and while you're looking at the chart, you're thinking, well, shit, I have no idea what direction that thing's gonna go, no clue. But then you go see your friend or coworker the next day and you try to make up something. Why? Just tell them I don't know. You don't have to know everything all of the time. You're not supposed to. Could you imagine if you could? Well, that'd be pretty amazing. You'd be the market wizard. This goes for trades too. You shouldn't know all the time. Somebody might bring up an idea and you're gonna look at it and just be like, I don't know. And I, I, I say it sometimes. I, I honestly, I don't know what you were looking at there. I just, I don't know what you were looking at. I don't know. Get used to saying, I don't know. I am not sure. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't see a pattern there because that's what you should be saying 95% of the time. Stop trying to explain something that can't be explained. Your job is to find what you actually can explain and easily explain. Your job isn't to try to make something out of nothing. Your job isn't to try to sprinkle fairy dust over some crappy little stock and say, oh, now it's worth buying. No, it's called next, it's called moving on. It's not our job to explain everything. Find specific instances where we can explain what is happening. Find specific instances where the odds are obvious. You don't need to be right all the time. It's okay to admit you don't know. I know, it's hard, isn't it? 
somebody comes up to you like, well, what have you been doing the last five years? I thought you were supposed to know. That's what you do. I don't know. That's the whole idea. There's a thousand stocks and you might trade 10 of them. I don't know what the other 990 are doing. And I'm not supposed to know. That's the whole point of what we do is to find what we do know. Okay. But too many of you through ego or revenge or the need to be right, you, you have to make sense of something that doesn't make sense. I'm not trying to figure out what my wife's thinking because that's just a that's just a lesson in, in insanity right there. I just move on. I have no idea. Please tell me. So when you think to it, you're only supposed to understand what you're supposed to understand. I know that sounds crass, right? But you look at something, you go, well, that makes sense to me. And this is why it makes sense to me. Over here, it doesn't. So you often look at charts and say, I don't know, absolutely, Ollie. Those four charts I gave you guys earlier, I have no idea what direction they're gonna go. No clue, none. I can tell you, oh, that's four bars up and I think it might pull back. But if I look at a chart, overall, that's, they're, they're hideous charts, right? I can look at this chart to you and, and say to you guys, okay, it's four bars up, but guess what? The resistance doesn't happen up to about 310. Who am I to say it's definitely gonna stop after four bars? I just know there's nothing here for me to trade. That's all that I need to know about this chart. There's nothing here for me to trade. That's all I need to know, okay? When I come down here and I look at this chart, I sit here and tell you, I don't know. It's at the 200 MA, it's nearing some support. It's not good enough for me to trade. That's all I need to know. I really don't know the next direction. I can give you my opinion on it, but I don't have any strong feelings. like strong enough that would actually matter to tell you what direction this is gonna go, okay? And this is the problem with so many traders. It's okay, just admit it's okay to say I don't know. You know why? It's actually nice to say I don't know because now it allows you to go look for something else. Now it allows you to not force a trade. So let me ask you, for those of you I like tennis, you guys know that, okay? What's, which outcome would, would you bet on? Nadal against Federer, just win or lose. I don't, not trying to, the number of games or the hours of the match, just win or lose. You wanna bet on the Nadal beating Federer or Nadal beating some junior, middle school, high school kid or high school kid? On clay, nonetheless. What bet do you wanna take? I need answers to this. Which one would you wanna bet on? You just, all you have to do is guess the winner or the loser. Do you want to bet on Nadal against Federer on any surface? Or do you want to get bet Nadal against a, a high school kid on any surface? I, I, I'm, taking, I'm taking this one at the bottom. I'm taking the kid. Duh, duh, and duh, right? This isn't rocket science. It wasn't meant to trick you. It's meant to say, obviously, Jared, I take Nadal, Nadal against some 13-year-old kid. That's the whole point. This is what trading is. This is your whole job, your whole goal in trading is to find the obvious winner, not the, wow, well, maybe, well, ah, ooh, oh boy. Just say, I don't know. That's too close to call. Nadal Federer is a toss up. Unless it's on clay, it's a toss up. If it's on grass, it's probably Federer, but you get the point, it's a toss up. Nadal against some kid is a joke. Pick the kid, right? I'll take, Nadal against the kid every day. That's your job as a trader. So what are you really doing as a trader? If you don't like your choices, you can sit on hands. You can walk away or you can trade. What do most traders do? Most, not all, most. They take the trade anyway. If you don't like your choices, you come up with some excuse. Hey, I'm bored. I need to be, that's why when I say to you guys sometimes in the chat room, are you not entertained, right, from Gladiator? Because sometimes you just need to be entertained. Sometimes you're trying to get back your losses. Sometimes you're trying to make something out of nothing. Sometimes you just, ego is just rampant and you just need to be right. No way I can end today red, I gotta be green. Yeah, revenge trading. 
So instead of sitting on hands or walking away, you find a reason to stay at your desk and trade when you know darn well the environment is not in your favor, but you're bored or you need to be entertained or it sounds crazy, but some people go, well, it's my job to make money and I haven't made money today. Well, I better take a trade because if I don't take a trade, I can't make money today. Well, but if you do take a trade, you could lose. So these are the reasons that people manufacture exactly, Brandon, they manufacture trades. They manufacture reasons to take a poor idea. Success is just timing your edge. That's it. Success is just timing your edge. But do you have the discipline to wait for your edge and the timing to meet each other? That's the question. You know the edge. Hey, this is the pattern. This is the bottoming tail. This is the volume. This is the reversal time. This is the, you know the edge. But do you have the discipline to time your edge? Wait for the timing because it, Unwall said it this morning, actually, appropriately. Guys, I'm gonna draw a circle and then you put that little slice of the pie in there, right? Most of the time you're not doing anything, you're scanning and you're not actually trading most of the time because you're waiting for your edge to meet the time, right? Timing your edge is what you're trying to do most of the time. Sometimes that happens at 9.32, sometimes it happens at 11.02, and sometimes, guess what? Sometimes it just never happens. And you don't have an edge that day because you didn't find an edge. And that's okay. Those are the days you need to be careful because those are the days these things sneak into your trading. Okay? And this is where people get in trouble. So while this lecture is not about rocket science, it's something obvious, but very few of you, maybe one or two of you, when I gave you those charts, could admit, I don't know. Literally, I think two of you said, I don't know. I think it was Berend and Bertel. I think are the only two people that said, I don't know. Everyone else tried to pick a direction for those charts because you think I'm thinking you have to. I'll repeat that. You're thinking I'm thinking you have to. Oh, well, Jared's expecting me to pick a direction. No. I want you to say what you really believe. I want you to say, I don't know. I want you to say, I'm gonna sit on my hands, okay? It's very important to be able to say those things to yourself because if you're not able to say those things to yourself, guess what the odds of you walking away or sitting on your hands are? Zero. I'll repeat it. If you are unable to admit to yourself, I don't know, if you're always trying to get the answer, then you're never gonna sit on hands or walk away. You have to be able to say, I don't know. Otherwise you won't be able to walk away. It's important, it's so simple, it's so basic, but it's so, so important, okay? So you look at certain charts and you go, oh, well this one's a bit more obvious. 15 minute three bar play on Apple. It's over the 15 minute, uh, sorry, the 50 MA on the daily and over the pivot and has a little bit more room. You have room up to the 200 MA. Now, is this the world's greatest trade ever? No, range could be a concern. $4 is a concern. But you want something where at least there's a semblance of an edge. There's something that actually looks like it should look, like the daily looks decent, it's over a red bar, it just broke through the 50 MA, it's over this double top. Range could be an issue, but again, this is how you dwindle down your edge, put the odds in your favor, right? Now, do you have to take this? We talked about this two weeks ago. One, two, three, four bars up, topping tail, red bar pivot, and there's your four bar play. Range is a concern. Resistance is a concern. This is where people manufacture a trade. And God forbid they get away with it. They'll do it again. Don't stop trying to manufacture trades. Say, I don't know, or say, it's not good enough for me to trade. This goes against my edge. My edge suggests four days up into resistance no longer is an edge, and therefore I don't have an edge, so therefore I don't take the trade. This is Federer against Nadal right here. Yes, it could work. Nadal could beat Federer. Could happen on grass. But the odds, oh man, that's a tough one. That's what this trade is, a tough trade. That's a tough play.
over here. Saw this one a couple weeks ago. Green bar, taking out a topping tail, but all kinds of junk. 50 period moving average, declining 50. Topping tail, red bars, red bars, pivots galore. Three bars up. What's your edge? Again, this is Nadal Federer. This is tough. It's tough to pick that. I don't know. Market's up five bars in a row here. Stock's up a bunch of bars in a row. It's at resistance. It's at the 50 MA, and you're sitting here wanting to take this. Why do I bring these two slides back up? I brought them up two weeks ago. I'm bringing them up again on purpose because these are trades people in the chat room took. Didn't suggest. They suggested it, and they took it. YOLO. People do this all the time. This isn't some thing that happens occasionally. Every day this happens, okay? Your job is to know your edge and to know when you don't have one. Because if you don't know your edge, you won't know when you don't have an edge. Makes a lot of sense. Now, now you have an edge. This stock is gapping under this area of support. It's not overly extended. It has consolidated for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. Gives you a four bar play, wide bar, two narrow bars, and there's your, your play. Guess what? This is the doll versus the kid. Now, I suppose it's possible you be, the kid beats him, but it's unlikely. Match the time frames, know your edge. Take quality, take the stuff that's obvious. It is your hard earned money, you know? Exactly right, Alan. You need to. You have to start thinking like a professional. There is no other way to do it. You have to start valuing every dollar. See, one of the issues, and this happens in life as well, with credit cards it happens and with trading it happens. We you know what the problem is? You don't see it. Let's be honest. When you swipe a credit card, you don't see any number. You just swipe the card and it pays for it. When you take a trade, you click a button, and there's money in your account, but you're not actually seeing the money in your account when you're clicking that. You're just seeing the price of the stock and how many shares you want. No one's coming out and going, ding, 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 that's $122,000, ding, 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 ding. No, you're just pressing the button. So the money isn't forefront for you. So all of a sudden you start making poor decisions, but you worked really hard for that money. That money that's in your trading account represents your blood, sweat, and tears. Working for someone else that you probably don't want to work for. That's why you're trying to be a trader. Respect and value that money and only put that money in areas where you think it has a really good chance of coming back to you. I'll repeat again, put that money in areas where you believe strongly it's going to come back to you. Don't send it out into a suicide mission. That's not what you're trying to do. Your money is there to help you make more of it, not less. I use the analogy frequently, you're the queen bee. You send the bees out and they bring back honey. You don't send them on suicide missions. Treat your money with respect. Take the best of the best. Don't put it up against a challenger that's too good or a challenger where it's, you're not sure, it's Tyson against Glass Joe, right? It's a serious comment, guys. It's a very important topic. The market is largely random. Most of the time, 90 plus, per, it's random. It's pure randomness. Our job is to find the times when it's not. And even then, our edge isn't that big. And even then, it's not that big. But you know what the beauty is? We don't need a big edge. We really don't need a huge edge. So, some things to think about. Don't get it twisted. Stop manufacturing trades. Your job is not trading. Your job is to make money. See, I forgot a little right there that annoys me, but I fixed it, right? Your job is not trading. Your job is to make money. Sometimes that means not trading, sitting on hands, walking away, or maybe trading. What are you really doing? Do you know your edge? If so, you should be or must be able to reproduce it to be successful. You cannot reproduce your edge. You won't be successful. And this is where new traders struggle. See, I could go out today, all right? And I could tell a brand new trader, say they've been trading for a month, and I would literally come in and say, I need you to lose money today. And I bet you they couldn't do it. I need you to make money today. They couldn't do it. 
I need you to lose money. I, they couldn't do it. It's literally random for a new trader. They don't have an edge and they're not able to reproduce it. Everything they do is random. Your job as a trader is to reduce your randomness to virtually nothing. The market's randomness, we can't, that can't be helped. But within your style, within your method, within your system, within your strategies, it's not random anymore because it's reproducible. And you only take it when certain things happen. Randomness isn't reproducible. Okay? Too many people... Uh, two mistakes. Too many people with enough technical knowledge to be successful, but they don't make money. Basically what this saying is there are lots and lots of people out there that know charts and don't make money. Proficient chart readers are a dime a dozen. Genuinely profitable traders are few and far between. They know their edge and they only put their money at risk when the edge is in their favor, right? It's the same as card counting in a sense, right? Your betting structure may change when there's more aces in the deck or more fives in the deck, depending on what your thing is. Like Rain Man, there's lots and lots of them. What's your edge? Most of you don't even know what your edge is because you're nearly, not completely, but nearly random most of the time, right? You need to give this some serious thought every time you take a trade. Is what I'm doing random? Or is what I'm doing a product of my emotions? Is it a product of revenge? Is it a product of boredom? Is it a product of just needing to be right, meaning ego? What is what I'm doing? What is it a product of? Is it a product of a professional trader with a systematic approach that has an edge right now? Or is what I'm doing a product of a novice trader who has no discipline, is bored, and just needs to make money because they're satisfying their ego. Where are you? Every time you push that button, those thoughts should be going through your mind. And this is why we come back to the one thing. If you can't find a reason not to take the trade, it's probably okay to take it. But you should always be looking for the reasons not to. That's your edge. Okay? That's your edge. So... Little bit of a shorter lecture this week, but I told you guys, I don't believe I've ever done a lecture on that specific topic before. Uh, I've been wanting to do it for a while and I just thought a couple weeks ago, I got thinking, wow, this is a perfect follow-up lesson to the one we did two weeks ago. My goal here is to show you guys that you don't need to know everything all of the time. It is okay to say, I don't know. It's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. Your job is to find what you do know and only trade what you understand. Don't trade what you don't understand. Don't make excuses for why you're taking a trade. In fact, this happens frequently as well. I'll ask somebody, explain your trade. They'll change the topic. Literally, we, it happened yesterday. It happens all the time. I'll ask somebody, well, why did you take that? Or what did you do? And then they just, they avoid the question or they answer it without answering the question. Right? And it happened yesterday. <laughs> It happens all the time. It happens in email. So I want you guys to really give that some thought. Go home. You're probably already at home and think, what is my edge? And is it repeatable? Or am I relatively a random based trader? Do I take trades because I'm bored? Do I take trades that I don't understand because someone else mentioned it? Do I take trades because I revenge trade? Do I take trades because my ego is forcing something? Think about all of those things and then give yourself permission to say, I don't understand. I'm going to move on to the next trade till I find something I do understand. All right. Hopefully that will help you guys become better traders. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.